In this video, I'm going to fix all this funky framing. And we're going to do it right now. So today is the day I fixed this floor. I'm doing all this remodeling, this hallway. Ripped out a closet and getting this floor ready so that I can remodel my kitchen. And when I do the floor, this will be all set. So what's going on here is when they put in this stairwell, because this stairwell was not original to the house, what they did was they just hacked out wherever they wanted. As you can see here, and they hacked this out. That's not good. And then we have some cracking in this joist. We have this framing that needs to be replaced. And they have this overhang here. So basically all this needs to be fixed. So my big plan is to support all these joists, rip this wall out, resupport that wall, raise it up a little bit. And depending on how bad these are bowed, I will sister these up. I'm definitely gonna sister this one up because this is gonna be the new head height for the stairs. I'm gonna cut this right out of here and raise up that head height because that is way too low for me. And then I might as well just sister that one up and raise it up to where it needs to be. So the thing with old houses is nothing's ever gonna be perfect. And when I go to do this, I'm not leveling the floors. We're gonna say that I'm straightening the floors. Let me show you why. I have my awesome little Sigmon laser level set up here. Big shout out to Sigmund for sending this to me. Really appreciate it. I haven't got a chance to use it, but this is going to be a perfect way to show you how out of level these floor joists are. So this is pretty much even with that sill where the joist sits and you can see how out of level that is. <laughs> so you might say, okay, raise that beam up and put these level. Duh. But no, I can't do that because if you look at this line over here, this side of the house is actually telling me, it might be hard to see, but this is telling me that this beam actually needs to drop a little bit. So if I raise this way up that much to make that side level, then this side of the house is gonna be all out of whack now. So basically these joists are where they are. I can raise them up a little bit these ones here but i really i'm i'm not leveling like i said i'm straightening so i want to match the rest of the house the rest of the house is kind of the same way not to that extreme but uh enough where i cannot put these level because then i'll just have this big bow unfortunately and here's the reason that that is unfortunate because for instance my refrigerator is sitting on a piece of strapping to make it level so really this should come up about two inches but like i said i can't do that another option would be to tear this floor up and then put in some creepers and then plywood on top of that and make this perfectly level with the joist staying the same down there but the problem with that is under here i have some vinyl that i cannot touch because it has the miracle mineral in it, which is asbestos. So as long as I don't disturb it, I'll be good. I'm just gonna do, unfortunately, a floating floor over this. And there's, you can see when they did the addition, there's like a hump in the floor. I could also put creepers right on top of this floor and then put plywood and then the flooring, but I don't wanna have a trip hazard. There's a little bit of a lip here, so I'm probably gonna have about a quarter inch. I might do a threshold. We'll see when I do the floor. But if I did creepers to make this level and then did plywood and then did the flooring, I'd have like 
you know, an inch and a quarter over here and then nothing over here. So I don't want to do that. It's unfortunate that I'm going to do a brand new kitchen and have a floating floor, but there's really nothing I can do about it unless I spend thousands of dollars to remove this. And right now I'm not uh, willing to do that. So we're going to make it work with what we got. My first step is to take this carpet up so I can see exactly what the floor is looking like underneath, and then I can make my decision of how I want to correct it. The carpet is gone, and I have set up some string lines. Since we know that these joists are staying right where they are, we can't level them. I want to at least make sure that they don't have a bow in them. This is tight on this end, and then it's tight over there. That's where the center beam is. And then if you follow this along, you can see this is right where that joist is. There's probably about a quarter inch or three eighths of a gap right here. So that can go up to that line, maybe a little more, and then we can drop it. So that will be completely flat at least, even though it's out of level. And then this next one, same thing, hold this down. And then that is over where the main beam is. And then on this one, it's about the same. And joist is right there. Now on this last one, I have it set up here. And then over to there. This one is a little more. This one's mm, probably about five eighths. And that's where that joist is. And that is the joist that is really hacked out and that they cut for the head height. So I think what I'll do is I'll start with that, putting in those two by eights. I'm gonna put in a two by eight on top of that sill, and then on top of the beam, jack these up to where they need to be and nail those into place. And then wherever this floor ends up right here, that's where we can start to determine where this floor should be. Okay, so basically I'm matching getting this to where it needs to be and then matching the floor all the way to about here, I believe is where that wall stops. That's the big plan. So back downstairs, this is the joist that I already sistered up because they hacked this out for a toilet at some point. So I did that when I did the bathroom, but this joist and this joist are the ones that I'm gonna take the bow out of in the middle here and I'm going to put the joist on this side so that it'll sit right there and it'll sit up on that sill. I know you can't see the sill right now, but there's a sill right there. I can't do it on that side because that will not end up being on the sill. So I'll do it on this side here and this side here. First, I'm gonna have to take off all the wiring like this, take these, braces out, these cross braces, make sure there's no nails like that one. So I have a clear path for when I put my joists up there. So I wanna emphasize that that is a very important step, cleaning everything out of the way, because one of these little nails, once you're ready to put this in, can just make your life a nightmare and you'll be screaming and shouting. Here's the sill. Make sure that's cleaned off. Sill's in good shape. Wiring's not in good shape. I'm gonna need to replace that. Anywho, let's get ready to jack these up. I'm gonna be using these two bottle jacks. I'm gonna push both of these joists up at the same time. Here's a little trick to find where you need to put the jack if you want it right in the center of here. You hold something like this and you drop it. That's pretty close. Check this one. Nailed it. <laughs> I'm gonna cut a couple two by fours and get those set up. There we go, got my two by fours set up. For those of you who follow my channel, you see me do this a couple times, but what I like to do 
is put a couple screws like this. This just makes the jack post stronger. And up on the top, what I like to do is a screw like this, just in case. And the just in case part is, let's say I'm down here raising this one up and this one comes loose because I lifted the entire floor up. Well, that now can fall and hit me in the head or break something. So if I do this, those won't fall. That's it. We're ready. All right, I'm gonna start raising this up just a little bit at a time. I'll keep going upstairs and checking and try and get it to where it needs to be. There's not a lot of weight on this. It's only the floor load. There's no wall there carrying the ceiling. So shouldn't be a ton of weight. Take a look at that. You should expect to hear creaking and cracking and popping when you do something like this because you're moving something that hasn't moved, in my case, for probably 60 years. So we'll keep going, little by little. And you wanna make sure you keep these relatively straight so they don't get knocked out. Because if your jack is at an angle and your post is like this, it could kick out on you. So you wanna avoid that. This first one is pretty good, nice and tight. The second one is almost there and it's even taken some weight off of this one and that's going up. From downstairs, I can tell anyways that doing this, straighten this right out and you can see here the dip going right here. So what I wanna do is put this piece in and then I'll drop that down and then I'll move that jack over to here so that I can help take the weight off. I got the joist tipped down and I'm going to take some construction adhesive and just butter this up so I can put it in. Right. Try not to get it on my head. It's a little awkward but taking this in and out is not exactly fun. Tip it back up. I'm good. Make sure I'm sitting on the sill over here. So now I have this point of contact and the other one down at the sill. So I'm going to hammer both of these, try and do it evenly on the bottom to get this into place. Make sure the top is tight first. Starting to go. Let's see if I can actually get a swing on the other side. I'm gonna grab a slightly bigger hammer. More hammer, more better. Now before I nail this, I'm gonna take some of these shorter timber locks and just make sure it's tight. This old board seems to be a little cupped. That's okay. this side but I just don't really have a chance to do that there's not enough room so I'm gonna nail from this side about every 12 16 inches and try not to shoot the wire oh, 
Final shot. That looks really good. All right, let's see what happens when we release this. Okay, I'm moving on from this section and going this way. And when you start doing stuff like this, depending on the situation, but if you have walls like this with doors, you might start to see some cracking. Some of these reveals may get bigger or smaller. Take a good look at that one. Uh, the bottoms actually might help this door, but your doors might get stuck. What a terrible looking door. So keep that in mind. I'm gonna look for some cracking in the crown molding and stuff, maybe in the drywall. Depends on how far up I go. But you can see this gap right here from this old wall. That's how much it dropped over the many, many years. The house was built in 1946. I don't think I'm gonna go back up that high, but that's a good indication of something sinking. And this, when your drywall breaks like that, that is definitely a sign of sinking. So just keep all those things in mind. This now is gonna have more weight on it because this, though it shouldn't, is carrying some of the ceiling load. I'm changing that over here because that's actually the center of the house. Um, but this is going to push that up and well, we'll see what it does. All right, I got my jack post set up here with my just-in-case screw. I've put this top plate in because I'm going to build a temporary wall here so that I can take this one out. And I might have to move this stuff. I might try and work around it. We'll see how it goes. But I may end up moving the washer and dryer out of the way. By the way, not ideal this distance here, but <laughs> so everything else, what are you going to do? Let's see what happens when I put some pressure on this. I'm also taking some of the load off of the other joist here as I'm doing this. So that might go up a little bit. Yeah, that's crazy that that's what was supporting that with that crack there and everything. Oh, it's gone up that far already. Don't put your fingers in there, Matt. Okay, I got that one raised up a little bit. And I got this in here. This is overkill. You could probably do one two by four piece, but I'm doing this like kind of one at a time. I'm gonna drop that jack. So that's sitting on this, and then I'm going to move that jack over here. Let's push this up a little bit, and then I'll raise this up. That way this shares the weight. Push this up a little bit, and then I can put this piece in. But look what I did. What a silly thing to do. Now I have to sneak a, a pair of pliers in there. Yeah. Check the weight of this. Yep, there is weight on that now. And the weight's coming off of that. So we'll move that over. Raise this one up a little bit. We can take some weight off. We're looking pretty good. That one is pretty much tight. That was the one that's already done. This one is pretty tight. I'm gonna go up a little more before I attach that one. And then that is the last one that was, maybe had to go up about five eighths. Go over this wire. Quick test fit. 
that one's gonna go in easy. Oh, I don't say the E word, Matt. There's something called crowning that when you do lumber like this, um, the board has a natural curve up. You wanna put the curve up. And I've actually made a separate video on that where I go into more detail. I'll leave a link in the description over to that video if you wanna check it out. Okay, let's glue it up. Ugh, no. Oh, not on my Mario mat. I'm moving that. Ugh. Damn it. All up on my Mario mat. This is not the best way to do this. <laughs> Whatever. As long as it gets done, it's the right way, right? Get up there quickly. Ugh. No more spills. Let's check the overhang. Just do the same that I did over here. That's good. We'll start with a small hammer. Top first. It's tight. And we'll do the same thing. A couple timber locks. Now this one's more important because this is the double that's going to support this cutout right here. So I definitely, I, I knew I was going to do this one. I didn't know I was going to do this one, but definitely this one. Let's nail it off. Not to nail through the floor. Okay, and very slowly put this down. That's it. All right. This is all supported now looks really good. There's somewhat of a gap here because I don't know if you can see it, but the joist is cupped. Same thing with this one. But yeah, it's good. Nice solid double right here. So that'll be good for when I continue this two by eight. I cut this, cut this, continue this two by eight to here and joist hanger that and support it under here. So the name of the game now is just to shuffle these bottle jacks around and raise this up, not where it needs to be right now, but raise this up enough that we can take the weight off and put all the weight on this temporary wall. So I got my wall, my temporary wall built. Took all the weight off of these. You can see there's a gap. The gap here. This one's a little tight, but the weight is off of that. Nothing on that. And all these are tight. You can see I added some shims as I went, as I raised certain points. These got loose, so I jammed some shims in there. I added a couple boards just in case one under the stairs because this is attached to the stairs and the way this is framed is not ideal so i don't want anything to happen while i'm doing this um, i'm really kind of a mess this is not supposed to be under the stairs either but nothing i can do about that these are just about where they were looks like this one dropped a little bit but i have a trick for hopefully raising that up when I frame that. That one got tighter. And I was able to raise this up enough where it did put this a little more level, but not really. And let me show you what's happening here. Remember what I said with the, the door frames and the reveals and everything? This 
is getting much tighter. And got some cracking going on here. That was already there, but it's getting worse. When this is all said and done, if I have a situation with that reveal, and I'm gonna be going and raising this anyways and making this my main support wall. This sits directly over the beam in the basement. So when I get over here, I'm gonna raise those ceiling joists up and take the weight off of that door frame and off of that wall completely. So that's the plan. So here's something to watch out for with these bottle jacks. See if you can see this. You see that? See that liquid? That is hydraulic fluid. And it looks like this is starting to leak. So I had this set up overnight and I noticed one of my boards was uh, got tight again. So this dropped down a little bit overnight. That's why I never rely on a bottle jack and I always use my just in case boards because that's starting to leak and that's no good. I marked it with a piece of tape because it's the same as the other one. So I know you can rebuild these, but I'm probably just gonna get rid of it for the price that it is. Um, I don't wanna mess around with it. It's not worth having something fall on my head. Just a little note for you. So what's gonna happen next is I'm gonna take care of this stuff right here. I'm gonna cut this back so that I can put a new piece in this way. Cut that, cut that, cut this half on here half on a joist and put a piece in and attach it to my double right here. And that's going to be the header for the end of my ceiling right there. I'm going to take this nice long pilot bit and drill a hole even with the outside of this joist. Now I can measure from that hole, I can mark three quarters. That is half on. Take my square, line it up to the top here. I'm gonna try and sneak past those nails a little bit. Safety first, change my blade over to a metal blade. Get some nails in the flooring. I'm gonna take my four foot level, put it on this board so that I know where I'm cutting this is gonna be straight. I wanna carry that mark over to the other side. I'm also gonna check for plumb. So now I wanna take this mark and make another mark an inch and a half back because I want to cut that and then have this board land on the face of this one. Try and cut it nice and straight. Boom. I'm going to check this with a string line. I got it tied to the end here tight. And First, check this, inch and a half, perfect. And then over here, hold it past, make a mark right here. Triple check it with my level. Sit on these, make a mark right here. And because I'm sitting on these, that should be an inch and a half less. 
where it should be an inch and a half between the two marks. Which it is. Perfect. Just like that, I'm going to run a sawzall in here and try and cut the nails. Might as well do it the whole way. Now, because I'm not taking this out and opening this up right away, I'm just going to take a board and put it down like this. Just so that if somebody happens to step there after I cut this, they don't, I don't think they're going to fall through, but at least they, uh, their foot won't drop and scare them. Just in case, now let's hack this and see what happens. Okay, now we can hack this piece out, and I will try not to cut wires. Boom shakalaka. Let's take a look at what we got here. I got this cut half on, that one's cut back, and that one's cut back to where it needs to be. I have enough room here so that I can run a two by eight all the way across here. But before I do that, I'm gonna sister this one up because of that big crack that goes all the way down. So I'm gonna measure, cut one for here, and then cut one for here and put those in. I'm gonna get up and over this board here and this wire. Slide this in. I'm going to try and be smart and add the glue to the existing joist. Hopefully it doesn't fall on my face like it was before. Oh, I'm way off. some flush right here. Make sure these nails are out of the way. Let's see how we did. I think I can leave that there and I can nail this and this and then I can raise this up and attach it here and here. I'm hoping this will also help to raise this up a little bit. We'll see. Nice. That's nice and even. That's nice and even. I'm going to nail this and this, and then I'm going to put a joist hanger on that. Joist hanger in, inch and a half to start. Joist hanger nails. And then right here, I'm gonna use three inch. So now that that's nailed off, I should be able to drop that.
Okay, all the joist framing is done. So let's get this old wall out of here so we can build our new one. Take down the wall. easier if I moved the washer and dryer, but that didn't happen. That wasn't up there very good. Oh, watch the pipes. I'm going to do a double top plate, give it more strength. new bottom plate. See how good this is attached. I got something. I got something for you. Break these concrete nails. They go flying. Ooh, money. This little sweep. And I cut a piece of pressure treated to the same length as my top plates. You're going to have to check in your area if you're doing this because some places don't allow exposed pressure treated. I'm just going to glue this up. And get it to just about where I think it needs to go then I can adjust accordingly if I get a little glue on the cement it's fine I cut a new jack post that can sit on my bottom plate and can go up to my two top plates I'm gonna go in between each joist because that's where I want the studs to actually sit. I'm going to jack this up a little bit. Somewhat in the middle. That is there at a point where I think there's a lot of weight on the ceiling. So now I'm a little bit more comfortable having something here. Um, now I can get a two by four and make sure my bottom plate is in the right area. Now I got the straightest two by four I could find and the top plate is going to determine where the bottom plate goes. So I'm going to hold that here and to my bottom plate, see how close I was. Wow, not bad. So basically I'm going to do this here and on the ends and just tap it with my hammer to get it where it needs to be. secret weapon <laughs> put this in here and you can turn this and it'll 
raise up. So now I have three jacks that I can work with. Now over here, see my top plate ends right here. So I'm gonna do a double right there. And then that is gonna carry this. So I'm gonna put a joist hanger on this joist right here before I start raising this up. And once that joist hanger was attached, it was just a matter of maneuvering the three jacks around, raising and lowering the floor to where I wanted it to be. Kept going upstairs, taking a look, using my level uh, and matching the rest of the house and putting those studs in to build that wall. So here's how we did upstairs. This is pretty much in the same spot. That one's pretty tight and that one is pretty tight. And the rest of the floor just is what it is. So over here, that's how the door turned out. That's probably gonna end up catching. So when I raise that up, hopefully that'll be fixed or I'm gonna have to cut the door. And actually in the bathroom, this is starting to catch. So I moved that a little bit, but no wall cracking, no tile cracking, all good. So to fix this bathroom door, all I had to do was take this long screw. I had a long screw already in there that gets attached to the stud in here. And I just tighten it up. And now it's not catching. Easy peasy. Now I'm gonna secure the bottom plate. And there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can use what's called a ram set. I don't know if that's the brand name or if that is the actual name of the tool, but it basically, you put a nail on the end of it and then you use a 22 caliber uh, blank basically for a gun and you hold it there. You There's a style where you actually hammer the end or there's a style with a trigger and it just shoots a nail in. You can also use tap cons, pre-drill, and screw those in to attach this. But what I like to use are these cut nails. These are old fashioned hand cut nails. Anytime I come across these, for instance, I pulled my hardwood floor up and this is what was attaching everything. These things are awesome. They're really strong and they go right into concrete. I suggest a nice big hammer and definitely safety glasses. You don't have to put a ton of these in. I'm just gonna put three in. This is about a six foot wall. So get it started. Now it's touching the concrete. You really gotta hammer these in and try not to miss. I've put some new cross bracing in here. These help to distribute the load as you're walking up there. And as a tip, don't put them tight. Leave a gap like that because if they're tight together, they might squeak. I reattached this pipe over here with that hanger. Should probably get a new hanger here. That's not great. <laughs> and I temporarily reattached this wiring, it's gonna come out when I do the kitchen, but it's out of the way for now. Just as a note, I am not gonna take this out yet. I'm gonna build all that stuff upstairs and kind of rip this out at the same time, but I will be able to open this right up to here, which I'm pretty pumped about. Now I'm gonna reattach these stairs to this wall, but unfortunately all of these gaps, because nothing is straight or even, are different. So I'm going to have to rip pieces to go in between. I'm going to go in between every stud and that's going to help the studs to not twist or bow. And it's going to help support the stairs. really aren't 
getting all the way to the two by fours. So I'm gonna put some timber locks in. Try and do this strategically. This is probably the best place for it, right about here. I don't wanna split anything. Okay, I'm gonna say it. That ain't going anywhere. Okay, all those pieces are in. And these stairs are secured. Much less bouncy. I can tell. I gotta take care of this side at some point. Let's not look at that. So we are good now to finish framing this, frame this closet and rip all that out. And this is my little boundary for my little guy. So I'll be starting that real soon. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to stay tuned for the rest of this project and all the other ones. If you haven't subscribed yet, definitely consider it. If you want to see more videos like this, you can click hereish and hereish and check those out. As always, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Ugh. Wish you could jump through the screen right now and help me. I need friends. Somebody to help me.